Well, I'm not exactly going to be apologizing for the way I look at this point over here. We were John C. Richmond, California. What's the damn cord around my damn neck here? It's still March 30th, 2021, Tuesday. Second day of the George Floyd hearing of sorts. George Floyd was the person who got killed by the local law enforcement of Minneapolis. Uh, wrong time, wrong place. He could have been just busted for a misdemeanor, and that's about it. And then realize he was passing off a $20 counterfeit. A local store goes crazy, calls the cops, and then the cops take matters in their own hands where they bust his ass and then they put their knee on him and then basically crush him to death. A few cops watching around. People are getting videos of what's going on, telling them to stop it already. There's been testimony from some of these witnesses yesterday, which I've missed. And there's also testimony today from more witnesses who took the videos for kids. Two of them have already been done already. There's also been testimony concerning about a EMT who showed up. Not in uniform, but showed up anyway to assess the situation to see if Mr. Floyd was getting the proper care or treatment because of his injuries increasing by the cop who is on trial right now. Xavier. It's a nightmare in itself, this whole situation going ongoing right now. I mean, I'm hearing people talk back and forth. Derek Chauvin is the first cop on trial. There's about a few more who are going to be put on charge for murder or going to be put on trial for murder or accessories to the fact. But he's got the limelight. He's got the spotlight. He was the one on Floyd's neck. And he just kept increasing the pressure. So basically, he suffocated him to death. No matter how many times he was pleaded at to stop it so he could live, the callousness of the whole situation is also on trial. Police procedures and brutality. A lot of people are making, besides political grandstanding, are trying to make a social statement of the whole situation. And it's another one added into a lot of trials that have, haven't gained enough popularity or visibility. But when they are visible, then we get into the ethics of everything. Media goes ape. Media goes crazy. They want to see blood. They quote-unquote want to see the truth because they want ratings. And they're willing to get the blood and they're willing to get the ratings because that feeds viewership and advertising. Their lifeblood. So at this point, that's what they're doing. Now, I remember what happened in Rodney King's situation. But this... The fighter, the uh, MMA fighter that they had on a witness trying to testify what he saw as a private citizen. Not as an expert witness, but as a private citizen what he saw and the techniques used by the cops. He also called for supervisors to show up to make sure this damn thing didn't go on as it did, but it did. George Floyd died right in front of people, right in front of kids. Same kids are on trial right now, actually testifying as witnesses against Chauvin because of what Chauvin's actions did. And basically, the, pro the public either solidified around him or crucified his ass. In a court of public opinion, he's either hailed as a hero or he's hailed as a villain. 
And what they're trying to do in the court case right now is prosecution wants him as a villain, defender, as a saint trying to do his job. And it's up to 12 people in the jury to make that determination whether or not Shelvin did his job or was there actual murder done. But result, but irregardless, the guy's... Screw that terminology. Either way, George Floyd is dead. Some people want him erased out of history because they don't want to remember. They don't want any portion of it, any part of it. And the thing of it is, he's already been idolized and iconed and martyred, so to speak. He's been made into a cult hero. An example of how corrupt a system could be. Or they call it is. I know they've been having this argument for decades on this. The system's always stacked against. Well, the leadership always does that anyway. Do I believe Mr. Floyd was murdered? Yeah. Do I believe that the cop didn't do what he should have done, been doing? Yeah. Do I believe this is this is another Rodney King situation? Yes. Rodney King, unfortunately, was a drunk driver on a chase, or actually the subject of the chase, pulled over in Selmar. Where's the Selma Valley? One of those two places. San Fernando Valley. And if no one had got a video of what happened during that time. If no one took shots, any pictures, or any recordings of any sort, it would have just been another police chase ended, and maybe a guy had gone to jail, bloodied up, and the reports would have said something else. The ability of using a camera to capture moments like this, it's it's like one has to have a camera ready just for anything these days. Because something can happen, you get the camera out, and then you're watching the after effects go on. Or you're watching the situation happen like this. And it's stressful. As I said before, if we did not have any videotapes of George Floyd. No videos. It's just another random situation. If we didn't have the Rodney King situation, there would not have been any reform happening in the LAPD. But it could have been something else, or it could have been someone else grabbing the limelight. Unfortunately, Rodney King was the one. And the four officers became the ignition switch that burned portions of Los Angeles and Los Angeles County. And it had to be reforms out of that. But more often than not, the situations like George Floyd are popping up everywhere. People have cameras and watching things left and right. Besides the racism regarding black people, there's also Asian people left and right happening. And those videos are being posted on social media and on regular media. Hatred towards another he human being videotaped and put in public. If there were no cameras, it would just be business as usual. No one would know, but they were always talk about, and no one would have proof if we didn't have cameras. Now, the, now the problem with having the cameras as well is not the availability. Anybody anyway, can get a damn camera anywhere. Pay 20 bucks, go over to a damn Walmart and get yourself a cheap ass camera. Take a little bit of crappy digital film, but you can you're still work it. Or if you got a video, or actually got a cell phone with a camera on it, well, there you go. It's a double edged sword, though. It's a double edged sword because it records what's being presented in front of the lens and also the mic. 
If it's carefully choreographed and staged, you've got yourself a fiction writing situation. And then you have to decide whether or not if it's fake or not. Depending on how level of special effects you can put in a damn situation. When you're talking about putting your cell phone out there and you're filming someone's inhumane treatment of another human being, regardless if they're wearing a badge or not, you're basically making a statement, a movie. You're making a film, a recording. Use whatever terminology that you want at this point over here, but you're making a statement right now saying that you're a witness. This is what my camera witnessed, but this is what my own two eyeballs have witnessed. Before the camera came, that's all we had. Two witnesses from everybody else around you. Collaboration. Cooperation. The majority versus the one. And sometimes the one didn't have a chance. Or well, most of the time, anyway. Now, this is you've got cameras going all around the place. And you've got recordings happening left and right. Changes the game, doesn't it? You say the system's fixed and rigged. With a camera, you can try proving it. But there's also limitations. There are limitations that we put upon ourselves to limit the viewpoint. The camera is willing to record. You just hit the record button and it's recording. But it's the, it's the operator behind it that has to make the judgment calls. If we actually have cameras all around us, constantly videoing, saving all this stuff, even some of the private stuff, this is why there are limitations on cameras. This is the reason why we have limitations on ourselves, because of some things we want to keep in private. But here we go with, again with the privacy issue at this point over here. Just how much privacy can we have? How much privacy can we get? And where our several liberties are at this point over here? There's going to be arguments somewhere down the road concerning about camera usage. Just how much is the camera useful and how much is the camera a detriment? I have stated in a lot of my videos and a lot of my recordings that I am no expert in any damn thing, any damn field. I'm an observer of a lot of things. I just have to keep the facts straight in my own damn screwed up noggin. But if I got my camera out, or if I got my machine out, I am recording. I am recording. I'm recording my own thoughts, my own feelings, my own actions. I'm recording conversations. I'm recording actions on the video. I have to make sure that there has to be a lead-in. I just can't click the damn thing on. But it also means premeditation at this point over here. I'm expecting to capture something. And yes, I am. I'm expecting to capture me and my voice. But if I happen to catch with something else, it doesn't mean I'm really expecting it or having it scripted out that it's going to be happening. Because then it means it's premeditated, more than, more so. But if I happen to go outside with a camera, people will see a camera. If they see a cell phone, the problem is, you'll never know. The problem with using cell phones these days is you'll never know whether or not you're going to get a video, video shot or you're going to get audio recorded one way or another. People just don't think about this. I think about it because I'm constantly doing it all the time. But I also think about where I am at the point. Is it relative? Is it merited? Am I going to be using it for personal storage, which I generally do? Everything I do for the audio recording is basically for my own damn personal records. Even for school recordings if necessary, but at least I try to get permission for that. So I have records for notes. They're just not publicized. Now, the only things I do camera is what I'm actually talking about in the camera and, and saying, well, they've got this camera over here. Use this. 
still powering this up. I'm shooting something over here. And look at this. I'm giving an observation over here. And somehow I get another person somewhere coming in, in, in the viewpoint. So now I got that situation over here. And yes, I'm doing a live body over here. Unless I'm doing a live body over here. And yes, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Here are the nice little clicks on here. Little bleeps, little bloops, blurps. So now I'm going to do a camera shot. A video shot of a video being taken at this point over here. Now, as I turn around and watch this stuff over here, you notice what the background right now is. This is generally why I usually have the camera facing myself in one particular direction over here. Would you want your camera showing this shit? Hell of a way to store records, isn't it? And then what's behind you? Oh my goodness, there's more stuff. There's stuff on the floor. Oh no, what do we got? It gets even worse. Okay, what else? Well, I'm not going any further, just to show you a general hovel. And you'll see a commercial on CNN. It's 1029 on the cable box. But then a pause. But then it'll stop. So basically, I got about a, a minute and 20 of an apartment room. What you're, showing, what you're seeing right now is basically what my camera angles all the time. Because this is what I want the audience to see all the damn time. I don't want them to see anything else. I don't want to see them uh, uh, mop out there, or boxes of foods or DVDs or other stuff hanging around over there. Or how about boxes of paperwork? Dust all over the damn place. Oh my god, a disgusting kitchen at the moment. Or even how a living room is fixed up. If you can see it, because of the light coming in, it screws up the damn camera. So it turns everything else into a dark shadow. And then I got a dog looking at me at this point. But this is the video. Now, here's the other thing. Ethics. You have your video. You have a video. Now, are you ethically challenged to post that out there or not? Are you making the decision to post it out there, and for what reason? Is it to educate people, to entertain people, or for logistics, for historical purposes or an alert to someone or something else that hasn't been discussed or should have been discussed it wasn't for what reason do we do this what reason do we put ourselves out there for why I don't know you tell me if uh, an injustice happened yes a video must be out there to record the injustice if you can and therefore put the injustice out there on tape and therefore you have the decision whether or not to post it out there or send the video some, to someone else who can post it out there. So while life is happening outside the walls I am recording this. But you notice that the camera is not pointed out there either. The windows are closed. The windows are shut, except for a little bit of light coming through. To give a little bit more lighted ambiance in this place. And therefore, I'm able to be put into a light where I'm actually able to be visible on the camera. And then the decision is to post it out there on video, actually on uh, social media. 
Will it help? Will it hurt? Now, you notice I started a video concerning about the George Floyd case. And we ended up doing with the videos. Because all of it's relevant. All of it has context. All of it has perception and, and pertinence. Relevance. All of it has. Because at this point, things change. Things have changed and they need to be recorded. Or do they? When you see an injustice of somebody getting hurt, practically killed, and the only thing you can do is be a witness and be a witness. And then make the decision whether or not you're going to be showing that to the public or not. If the public will accept it, fine. But if the public doesn't accept it, that's also. I didn't say fine either. The case regarding George Floyd was made public because we actually had the devices called cameras. We didn't think about ethics at the time. Someone was showing an unethical situation and therefore would be scrutinized and terrorized and, and torn apart in court things. There has to be relevance, there has to be context and reasons why this is being used. Ethical questions one has to keep asking themselves when they're doing stuff. Sometimes you do it by instinct. And if you happen to stop long enough and you start thinking about it, it doesn't work too well. Why am I going down here? Because in a few moments, i got to take life outside to relieve itself. She has no clue what the hell's going on except she don't like to be on camera. And if she is on camera, she's just not quite sure why I do it all the time. Because I want to record her essence one way or another. I'll take you in a moment, mamas. Give me a minute. I know, honey, I know. Actually, I probably have to take her out right now before she does something. Just think about it, folks. Just think about it real hard and heavy. The importance that we have the cameras right now to record anything and everything around us. I know it's a double-edged sword. Sometimes it's a triple-edged sword. We have our viewpoint, someone else's viewpoint, but we also have the truth. The camera is unaffected by opinions unless we use it to make it our opinion. We put our ethics into the way we use it. It's not the device you can't blame. It's the intent behind the camera that you have to keep thinking about.